Hello my loves. Right, my mother-in-law's in for an infill and a redesign. So I have filed that beautiful bronze design down to a thin clear base. We are basically doing um, overlays now, aren't we? Because her nails have grown out. If you can see any old bits of colour and scrappy bits on the nails, that is previous designs. I am taking Ethel, the absolutely famous Ethel, and just using this tool to push back the cuticles. This is from Navy Pro Tools. If you haven't got one, why? <laughs> why? You need one. I'll leave the link in the description box just so you can make sure that you get yourself one because you won't regret it, I'm telling you. Um, so oh, as you can see, Ethel also removes dust and debris from the nail surface, which is why I love her. So just, I'm just quickly whizzing over because obviously where I've been filing the nail anyway, there's not much on there to remove, but she will get out the dust from down in those folds there. Oh, it would help if I turned around the right way, wouldn't it? So there is some uh, debris on the thumb here from previous designs. But we're just gonna whiz Ethel across the nail surface, push up into the cuticle area and just release any cuticle that's stuck on the nail there. And that's that done. We'll go in with the e-file on a low setting. I go with like with a five. And this is just a, a cuticle bit from Nail Dot Supplies. And I just use it to exfoliate right up around the cuticle area where I'm going to be placing my thin clear bead. And it just releases any more uh, dead tissue that might be kind of stuck there. And I always do like halfway on one rotation and then I switch the rotation to go around the other side. Also, I use this, this opportunity now for any lifting. See that bit of lifting there? So I'm going to start filing that and then I'll go back in with a hand file and get rid of it. So it's good to have a close inspection as well. You'll notice I haven't got my gloves on. Very naughty, but I ran out and I, th I thought I'd ordered them and I hadn't. And if you notice my thumb looks bad both my thumbs do it's because i'd caught them both and they'd started to lift so i'd removed the lifting and um infilled them after this but it was my fault i got them caught because i have got super long nails at the moment and i'm not used to it <laughs> so <laughs> gave myself a couple of injuries never mind so yeah i've switched rotation i'm going back in the opposite direction You guys have been loving these yellow nails, by the way. I feel so super cool with them on. I feel so extra and so amazing. I, they make me feel good. There's something about this color. After that, I will dust off the nails with my super fluffy soft brush. Tickle, tickle, tickle. And then I'm gonna go in with my Navy Pro Tools Helen Nippers. I love them. Don't need to tell you, I use them all the time. So I'm just gonna release any bits that are kinda of hanging. I'm not gonna cut them to within an inch of their life or expose them to any risk of infection and God knows what else. It's literally just, I'm checking and I'm seeing, okay, there's a bit of a hangnail, a little bit hanging there, we need to get rid of that. Off it comes. Very little bits, nothing major. Okay. But because they're so sharp, um, that it's hard to explain. They're incredibly good quality tools, so their motion is incredibly smooth. It makes them very easy to use. So they may look the same as other tools, but they don't feel the same. And I know that because I've got other tools, so I can compare them. So I, I've dehydrated and prepped, and I'm going in with primer. You saw me give them a good scrub to get rid of any other bits of dust that were lying around. Only priming the areas that have no acrylic on them. Now I'm using a different one from Diamond Nail Supplies. It's the Ultimate Adhesion Liquid. Uh, it's actually got a built-in primer. So technically you don't need to use primer, but I still did. And this is absolutely, I've had feedback from other people that have used it. And apparently if you have any problem lifters, apparently this is the dog's bollocks, you need to use this. Now 
My mother-in-law's not really a problem lifter, but I thought I'd use it anyway. Um, because um, Jade asked me to do the stinky test because I have a sensitive nose when it comes to monomer and I'm quite fussy. Uh, stinky test wise, it's actually slightly less odor than her normal one, which is good. Um, doesn't burn my eyes, that's good. It's, for me, I found it slightly slower setting. So a bit like Nao Nails has their high speed and then they have their medium and then they have their maximum adhesion and that, that's a slightly slower setting. This is like that. Slightly slower setting, maybe work a little bit drier with it. Apart from that, absolutely brilliant. So I'm just putting a thin clear base down so that I've got something to file back to next time. Tucking it in. Just tuck it in at the cuticle very gently. You don't need a thick amount of product, just a bit of protection for the nail. You're gonna laugh at me. My mother-in-law chose the color that I hate the most that I forgot to take out of my basket. But I love her, so I did it anyway. Um, yeah. And I don't care if you get mad at me for saying I hate this colour. I love the colour. I hate working with it. Can you guess what it is yet? Go on. It's the Azure Sky, I think, from Glitter Bells. I've got some Glitter Bells colours that are grey. This one I don't like. Colour is so lovely. It's like a forget-me-not kind of colour. Um, it's so pretty. So if you know of a colour like this that is not CJP or Glitter Bells, because they both um, marble. And this, but this one marbles. Uh, it goes patch. You'll just see. I'll just show you. Just send it how it is. Onto the next finger because the ring finger is going to have glitter on it. I'm just persevering though, really. Good job it's an ombre. I end up covering most of it up. <laughs> It's just such a nice colour. So then I tried the flicking the reverse bead, okay? Thinking that would be better. Because there's that tone I want, but no. Nope. no, nope, because the white just comes away from it. And the two just separate. Like, they, they don't even like each other. They don't even want to be close relatives. So unfortunately... Yeah. It's just not the easiest to work with. I'm sure there's worse, and I'm sure there's other brands with difficult ones that marble. Right, this is my own blend of cover powder. This is using Stripped and Bare from Diamond Nail Supplies. Equal parts of both, and then... Or pretty much equal parts of both. And then a sprinkle of Glitterati Fairy Chrome in silver, and it makes a sparkly, beautiful, pinky nude colour. And it just gives me the right amount of coverage, so I'm happy. It was requested that I try and do some side views of like how I place my beads and stuff, so I'm trying. I don't know if this is side viewy enough or if you need a different view. I will be getting more overhead views um, in the next, I'd, I'd say conservatively the next month because it depends how long it takes Mr. B to, to fashion some kind of overhead device. Just removing a little bit off the tip there, but I'm covering the majority of this blue because it was very, very patchy, so I I wasn't really happy with it. But it is just a nice colour, isn't it? Very difficult. I am going to have to remove it from my basket though, because I just think if I have to work with it again, I'll cry. So 
So I'm going to place my bead down. I picked up a bead that was too small there, so I just got rid of it. I was like, what is the point in that? Sarah, do your job. Pick up the right bead, you silly woman. So I've changed the view because I'm feeling fancy and I'm just tucking that bead up there and then bringing it down. Now, I, I this bead was too big, basically. So I splattered it and it went <laughs> right there, look. <laughs> so I had to go in and fix that because I'm ridiculous sometimes. So I just tucked it in, made sure I pressed it up against the nail and nowhere near the skin there, so getting it away from the skin. <clears throat> I was having a right old mare doing this set because I'm working with something I don't like working with and I'm hot and bothered. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> Okay, this glitter. Oh, this glitter is so sexy. This is from Glitterati Nails Iridescent Multi-Mix Box. And it's got like 12 little sections. And this is like a bluey, a light bluey one. Oh, so pretty. I think it's in the summer collections, I think. Don't quote me on it, but if you want to know, I'm sure Glitterati will point you in the right direction. And now I'm just gonna keep adding that glitter until I got full coverage. Working with smaller beads. Obviously I'm aware that the monomer is slower setting, so I try to be more gentle with my brush movements and try to I've got a bit more time to press the glitter in to the damp nail as well so it's actually if you're learning it's really good for you because not only have you got a slightly slower setting monomer but you've got that added adhesion because when you're learning I, I mean I still get lifting I'm not lifting free you know not always anyway I'm certainly not going to claim that I am that would be wrong there's always that little bit of dust or something that you just miss, you know? Okay, onto the thumb, and this is another one from the Iridescent Multi-Mix, and this is a kind of silvery one. It's so gorgeous, it's silver with a gold hue. Oh, I just wanna lick it, actually. Might be a bit crunchy. So I'm just making the wet, the whale, the nail wet with a bit of the glitter and acrylic and then I can start adding more and moving it around with the very, very tip of my brush, see? Just nudging it into place, very gently. So you can always go back and move it and add a bit more and whatevs you need to do. Love a good thumb. Ooh, I love a good thumb. It actually covers up this red really well as well. Quite surprised. That shows how long. I can't even remember when I did this red set. Crikey. So I'm just patting in now, tapping that glitter down. Nice and flat, but good coverage. Look at it, it's so, so, so pretty. That is actually one of my favorites. It's on par with the Tammy Taylor um, Dazzle Rocks Disco Ball, because that is just phenomenal. Right, on to, oh yes, I know what I decided to do. See that, that's the box. If you just go back, you'll see in shot, that was the little box of glitters from Glitterati. I do a little swoosh as well through every single nail because I just can't cope with that blue. I'll be honest with you, it's just really patchy. So I needed to detract the eye away from the patchiness or soak them off and start again and I didn't have time for that. So I'm just doing a little glitter swooshy on each nail and I used the, the same one I used on the thumb. I just kind of did a corner to corner swooshy. Oh, I've got some Lush Nail Mail coming this week. I can't wait to show you. Do you want an unboxing? It's from Angel Crystals. Would you like an unboxing? I still need to do a video and show you these um, flakes I got sent from Beauty Big Bang. In fact, I need to get hold of Beauty Big Bang and say, do you realize you sent me a bag of all these things? Because I wasn't expecting them. <laughs> 
so I will get those done. So as you can see here, you just work super thin. Super, super thin, just tap, tap, tap. I've got my first student next week. I'm so excited. I'm hoping she'll let me share her work on Instagram, so keep an eye out and you can check in on our day of progress and learning and development. And I think it's gonna be super, super fun. Can't wait. Oh, and I'll do a little salon tour as well. It, although, well, it'll be a last minute thing. There we are, look, look at those. Don't they look cute now? We need to cap them now. Capping them in clarity. Clarity! Now, again, I had to realize that I was working with a different monomer, so the beads were slightly slower setting, which means they remained sticky for a bit longer. Um, so, I was like, what's going on? Am I doing this differently? You can just tell when you get used to something and you do it the same over and over and over, and then you change an element, you feel the difference. It's ever, even though it's not a particularly big difference, you still feel it. But yeah, for capping, this would be great for a beginner again, because you've just got that extra working time. So I'm tucking the bead, placing the bead on and I, I kind of position it in the center to stop it rolling out and then I start tucking it in with my brush. Very gentle little tapping motions. I don't apply a lot of pressure because it will just splat. And then I, I will remove any excess even if I have to go back and add a little bit more. I'd rather, <clears throat> if it's hanging off and getting stuck to my brush, I'd rather swipe it away and then reassess whether I need to add any more. Obviously some systems work differently, some systems work drier and you can literally walk a really dry bead down the nail very very easily. I just work a little bit wetter. Placing it on, tucking it in and then just working it down that nail. Again go back to the other side and I tuck it right in and I splat it on my mother-in-law's finger because that's the right thing to do. No, it's not, don't do that. So it's handy having stiletto nails though. So yeah, the, I, 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 I forgot, I, my gloves should be, oh, did I order them? Oh, I bloody hope I did. I'm gonna have to go and check now. And again, place the bead on, tuck it in, feather it down. I'm just going to add a little bit of the tip there because I felt like I just missed the very tip. Oh, look at my bling, sorry. Just caught a glimpse of them bling blind in me. If you want to know what's on my nails and you want to watch the video, I will put it in the description box if I remember. Mm -hmm. So you can check that out and grab my discount codes and all that stuff. All that good stuff. Did you see Liz Guild's uh like neon yellow. Oh my God, those nails were so cute. They were schmexy. Just another tiny weeny little bead. Okay, a little bit of filing quickly, but then I went out of shot because I moved a hand forward and forgot to adjust the camera. So I'm just doing side wall, side wall free edge and then I do the body of the nail but I change files when I go near the cuticle to a slightly more gentle file because this these stainless steel files are super strong but they really can slice up a client so um, I have my trusty files that I use for the cuticle area which are just a bit more soft
And then we'll go on to top coat because, oh, Milo. Milo's knocking the door to come in. We will jump to top coat because I went out of shot. Because I'm sully. So get that top coat in there. Look at the shine. And then we'll go and do a little bit of stamping. And you don't see me do stamping very often, do you? Because I forget I've got stamping plates, that's why. I forget what I've got. I have so much that because it's not on display, because it's been in storage boxes, while the uh, nail studio slash salon slash summer house slash end of the garden is being built, I forget what I've got. Hello, my love. You right, my love? Right, mate? <laughs> so yeah, once I have all my stuff out and I'm able to look at it, I'm sure that you will see much more variation in designs. I have two designs in my head that will be coming to life very shortly as well. Okay, so I've just, I don't even know what Born Pretty plate I've used. I will put it all in the description box, I promise. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Doesn't that really kind of like excite the nail a little bit? I love it. Oh, I'm gonna have to do more stamping. I really am, I'll have to get some more stamping plates. Let me know your favorite stamping plates, please, in the description box, because I wouldn't know where to start. And these are the finished nails. I think actually they turned out all right, considering. Bit of a headache. But thank you for watching. Tally bye.